This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Today, speculation rises about an Iranian attack on Israel. A major property tycoon is sentenced to death in Vietnam, and Viktor Orban and Donald Tusk become unlikely allies. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Friday the 12th of April 2024. Our main story today, 12 days after the Israeli attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, US intelligence has reported that Israel is preparing for a direct attack in the next 24 to 48 hours, either in the north or south of Israel. Earlier on Wednesday, Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei said the attack in Damascus was equivalent to an attack on Iran itself. 13 people were killed inside the consulate, including senior Iranian military leaders. Khamenei proceeded to explicitly warn the international community that Iran will react forcefully and that Israel must and shall be punished. Israel's Minister of Foreign Affairs responded on social media by saying if Tehran does attack, Israel would hit back. The Israel Defense Forces have cancelled leave for soldiers serving with combat units and called up reservists to bolster air defense units. A possible Iranian strike on an Israeli city would be a first and intensify hostilities in a major way. Israeli embassies have also been considered targets for potential attacks, with several missions around the world shuttered. The scale of Iran's impending attack is uncertain, however, as are the possible consequences. US analysts have suggested that Iran's retaliation will only be strong enough to send a message to Israel and that Tehran is not looking to start a regional war or to overplay their hand. Some analysts suggest that Iran doesn't even have the military capability for a significant confrontation, but a possible alternative would be an attack via an Iranian proxy, Hezbollah, which has traded fire with Israel from Lebanon almost daily since the 8th of October. However, officials from Biden's administration aren't certain that Iran's attack will be mild enough to avoid escalation, or striking Israel in a way that won't prompt the US to respond militarily. President Biden did affirm the US's ironclad supports for Israel against a possible Iranian attack on Wednesday, and has said that despite his recent critique of Netanyahu's strategy in Gaza, that any attack on Israel will be met with an aggressive US response. The White House has tried to reach out to Iran, as the two don't have diplomatic relations, to persuade them to not attack Israel. The US has reached out to China and European allies, urging them to send a clear message to Iran that escalation is not in Iran's interests. According to US officials, they've seen no evidence that Beijing has done anything to apply pressure. Whether the US's effort to ease tension will work is something that we'll see in the coming days. There's more on the way, but remember to subscribe and ring the bell for another daily briefing on Monday. Plus, if you want to support the channel like Sebastian Townsend, then consider joining the new TLDR membership program for just $1.99. Over in Vietnam, a major property tycoon has been sentenced to death after embezzling more than $12 billion. In the country's largest ever financial fraud case, Trong Mai Lang, who comes from one of Vietnam's richest families, and is the chair of property developer Van Thin Fat Group, and was found guilty of bribery, embezzlement and abuse of power, after embezzling funds from Vietnam's Saigon Joint Stock Commercial Bank. She did so by illegally controlling the bank through proxies, using ghost companies to take out loans and bribing government officials. A further 85 people, including Lan's husband, Eric Chu, a businessman from Hong Kong, have also been charged in the case. Lan's representatives have said that she'll appeal the verdict. Now, the crimes have made things even worse for Vietnam's ruling Communist Party, which has already been beset by various other scandals and resignations in recent months. Vietnam's President Va Van Tong resigned in March after only a year in office because of unspecified violations and shortcomings, while Tuong's predecessor also resigned in January 2023. It was only a few days ago that we covered a story about the EU's new migration plan. In essence, the EU has tightened the rules and will speed up the asylum process and make it easier to send irregular migrants back to their home countries, while also requiring EU member states to share the responsibility for migrants. This latter point is referred to as the relocation mechanism. This, though, appears to have angered politicians in the EU on different sides of the political spectrum. On one side, you have the Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk, who rejects the idea of the relocation mechanism, 
and has stated that he would find ways so that even if this pact enters into force in more or less the shape in which it was voted on in Parliament today, that he'll protect Poland from the mechanism. At the other end of the spectrum is Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, who said that the pact was another nail in the coffin of the European Union, and that borders are no more. He added that Hungary will never give in to the mass migration frenzy. As things stand, the legislation is awaiting approval from EU member countries. Moving to the world of video games now, where yesterday the 20th BAFTA Game Awards took place. Leading the way in terms of awards was the much-anticipated Baldur's Gate, a fantasy role-playing game set in the world of Dungeons & Dragons. In total, it won five awards, with its most notable win being the Best Game Award. Alongside this, it also won awards for music and narrative, actor Andrew Wincott won an award for his acting in the game, and the game also received the EE Player's Choice Award. Just behind Baldur's Gate is both Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Viewfinder, a puzzle game, which both won two BAFTAs each. It's also worth noting that, while Spider-Man 2 was nominated nine times, it came away with only a single award, a BAFTA for the best performer in a leading role for Naji Jeter in his role as Miles Morales. While these awards might not be as high profile as other award ceremonies such as the Oscars or the Golden Globes, the award show does still represent an industry that's been on the rise in the last few years. Last year alone, for example, gaming sales accounted for about £4.7 billion in the UK alone, more than double that of the music industry. And finally, over to devastated Gaza, where UNRWA has reported about 70% of the population of Gaza are drinking salinized or contaminated water. But one man, Mohamed Asalia, is providing at least 1,000 people a day with clean water, using a solar-powered well he built in his house. Most wells aren't running due to a lack of electricity and destruction of infrastructure. So Asalia coordinated a group of people with expertise to help build the well. He also set up a fundraiser to tackle the inflated costs of solar panels and materials needed, which he said were available but cost about four times the pre-war amount. Asalia is looking to expand this grassroots project, but will need outside help to do so. Now, watching our videos, it's understandable if, at times, you feel like the world isn't terribly safe. And unfortunately, this can be the case online too. You might try your best to keep everything secure, maybe you try to rotate through favourite passwords online, but that's not always enough to keep you safe. In fact, the most common form of account hacking these days is called credential stuffing. Essentially, you use one of your normal passwords on a website that's poorly maintained, and then if it gets compromised, you could find that information landing on the dark web. Hackers then just attempt the same email and password combinations on your social network accounts, streaming services, banks, you get the point. Luckily for you, NordVPN has a whole bunch of tools that can keep you safe online. With their suite of threat protection tools, including a dark web monitor, which notifies you if someone leaks your credentials. It's not just that though, their threat protection can also warn you about phishing links and block malicious ads before you even see them. It really is all-round protection for your digital life. And if you sign up for a two-year plan using our link, you'll not only get a massive discount, but you also get four extra months totally free. So if you want to support the channel and improve our journalism, then make sure that you use the link in the description so that they know that you came from us.